Good morning, Year Ten, and um, today I'm going to do a little video, and um, just going over where we should, where we're at, and what we should be focusing on at the moment whilst we're working from home. And um, on this first slide, you can see this is what we're focusing on. We are focusing on our revision of our Year Nine topics. Okay, so at the moment, in the last few weeks, we've been doing sustainable ecosystems. We're going to finish off with that today, with just a bit of advice and a few pointers to help you with that. After this week, we'll be moving on to looking at some work to do with global hazards. So going over your kind of hazardous weather and your tectonics work. So if you are feeling confident in sustainable systems and want to start looking at that, you can do. And then finally, we'll also try and touch on a bit to do with dynamic development. Obviously, that was the Zambia topic that you did um, in year nine as well. So like I say, you can be revising as you wish and when, but please make sure that you're trying to focus. OK, it's just at the specific points that I'm setting stuff. OK, but if you can get ahead, feel free to do so. So today we're going to look at system sustaining ecosystems case study knowledge. You should have been doing that work over the last week, so you should feel confident with the case study knowledge. And today I just want to look at, over some of the exam questions that I set you and just give you some feedback in terms of where we need to tweak. A lot of people are kind of making the same little mistakes. And if we can get those right, then we should be in a really strong position going into next year. So in the spec, we can see that there's three kind of key parts that we need to be focusing on. So at the top bit there, you can see that we've got the red box showing that attempts to sustainably manage an area of tropical rainforest. So this is our crock range biosphere reserve case study um, that we need to look at. At the bottom, we actually for polar environments need two. We need to be looking at a small scale example, so Union Glacier, tourism, and then we need to look at a global example, which is Antarctic Treaty. Now, from the exam questions I received, some people getting confused what means by small scale and global scale. So you need to make sure you know that spec understanding to make sure you're getting that right. So the Crocker Range Biosphere Reserve. So you need to know some key basics about where it is, what is it like, what's it aimed to do? So on these slides, and you can pause and read through these in your own time. These are some key points that I picked out about the case study. We want to make sure we've got an understanding about the basics and then we can also talk about how sustainable it is. So when we talk about environmentally sustainable, we can look at these kind of features, picking out examples of animals that we see in the Borneo rainforest and in the Crocker Range Biosphere Reserve. And they are it's environmentally sustainable because they're protecting these in species. They're stopping them, these endemic species, which means they can only be found here. So we must protect them. So we need to show that that is environmentally sustainable by protecting them. But also we want to show that how it can be socially and economically. So looking at the things to do with tourism that happens there, the long term research. OK, looking at what local people, the 52 villages and the small scale agriculture that happens there, rubber tip tree plantations. This is all great place specific information that we don't need lots of. But if we can just get that little bit in, it shows good knowledge. Finally, when we're kind of looking at the success of this, we must be able to talk about how sustainable or unsustainable it is. And it's quite hard to find some stuff about this, about unsustainability. But the, one of the best things you can write about is the Kweduan Dam in Borneo. Now, there are plans to build this dam in, in the, as part of the Crocker Range Biosphere Reserve, even though it should be protected. However, there's such a demand for water for the people that live there. Remember, this is an area that's probably most likely EDC um, area that there's many poor people who need support. But this may come at cost of the, um, the environment. So, again, you need to make sure that you can show that you can evaluate both sides of the argument. In our second part, then, we've got our two polar <coughs> excuse me, case studies. We've got our Union Glacier, which is our small scale tourism and our global example, the Antarctic Treaty. Now, the Antarctic Treaty, OK, if you remember, so the treaty is this agreement that looks to protect Antarctica from certain activities. OK, now only things that can really happen there is scientific research, protection of wildlife in the fragile island, and some tourism. Now, when you've done your revision for this, you should have looked in some detail about kind of the, some of the rules that people have to follow. Now, again, we've got to be able to talk about how this is successful. And that's quite easy because obviously these rules are in place, which does help protect Antarctica. But again, talking about the unsustainability is a little bit harder. Now, what things to consider maybe to look into 
is, for example, one of the rules is that you cannot do oil mining, but that only is in place until 2048. So if the demand for oil is still there and they need to access it, those rules might be relaxed to allow people to use the minerals that Antarctica has. So is that sustainable in the long term future? Maybe less so. So again, maybe look into that. All right. Plus, tourism obviously does take place. You can't stop every single tourist from doing some sort of damage. So again, you really need to consider what you know how you can talk about that and make sure that you're talking about that you know the first is socially and environmentally sustainable aspects of it but obviously tourism provides a lot of money and that ties into our other case study as well and that, that is the union glacier so union glacier okay is a tourist kind of camp that people can go to if you've not been on the union glacier camp website please do so it gives you some ideas of costings and some of the activities people can do there so really really useful okay websites kind of show you what they try to do to try and be as sustainable as possible and protect the antarctica even when tourists are there but as we said tourists may kind of take advantage of this and may not follow the rules as, as to be exact so again having ideas use those kind of you cut your um, knowledge organizers things like that to help you pick out some of those different arguments Finally then, okay, you can have a go at kind of mind mapping some ideas to do with Union Glacier. So you see on the top right, you've got some toilets that are used. And again, it's tried to separate so that waste can be disposed of out into uh, Chile or South America. You've got the camps that aren't permanent in the top left. Okay, but again, you can see tourists interfering with wildlife. Finally then, is the exam questions okay that you need to submit via email so these so a lot of these exam questions have been sent to me and the kind of same mistake is being made okay in both areas so if this is an example of an exam answer I got sent by one student a sustainably managed area of tropical rainforest is the clock range biosphere reserve in Borneo Malaysia the biosphere is successful so talking about the positives here is because it helps protect endemic species such as the cloud leopard orangutan and protects cultural activities of 400 small communities and 300 plant species. Fantastic, really good place specific detail in there. However, it's missing a key thing. This means that, where's the explanation? It needs to show why is this then sustainable? It is environmentally sustainable because, if we look at the second paragraph, however, the reserve is unsuccessful because there are still plans to build a dam in the area, which means that the village Will wildlife will be affected? It doesn't fully stop tourist activities, which could damage the ecosystem there. So we've got a couple of ideas, but they're not really. There's not here. We're actually lacking the place detail a bit, and also we're not developing those ideas fully. So on this next slide, you should now be able to see, okay, a model answer. Now here you can see that it's going to use the same parts of the answer, but just with that little bit of extra detail, which shows. So in that first paragraph, we see it says. This means that it is successful environmentally sustainable because it prevents species from going extinct so we can research them further and possibly provide medical support in the future, which is also socially sustainable. However, the reserve is unsuccessful because there's still plans to build a dam, the Kuadan Dam. So again, place detail now in the area which means that wildlife is effective and which could lead to flooding in parts of the Crocker Range. Further down then, it then goes on to say this is not good for the ecosystem as the wildlife is damaged and could be introduced for alien species. It is sustainable, uh, not sustainable because we want to preserve species and keep biodiversity strong in this area. Some will argue it's socially sustainable though as water is much needed for the local people. So again, we're going into that bit more detail. Finally, <coughs> same thing needs to come into place for the last question. Make sure you're showing both sides of the argument. So here we can see that this person has written a little bit more detail. There's some good links. Again, there could be a little bit more place detail in here in the second, in the two main paragraphs. But again, what we are seeing is that they're kind of explaining that kind of that sustainable aspect. But even then, it could be taken further. So really try to get that into your exam answers. So final task for staying in ecosystem. So next week, I'm going to be setting some work on global hazards. This is your last opportunity this week to get sustainable ecosystems tied off. Make sure that you feel confident with all the knowledge that you've gained about it and that feel like you kind of you've got it under your belt. So, again, that could be doing your mind maps, your flashcards, anything about anything you're still not sure about. So I want you to have go one more question going on what I've said today about your skills. To what extent is one example of sustainable management of the Arctic or Antarctic successful? 
So for this question, I want you to be talking about the Antarctic Treaty, the one case that you've not answered a question about yet. Really consider what I've said. It's an eight mark question, so I'm looking for three paragraphs really. OK, peel paragraphs. Make sure you're linking it back to the question. If it says to what extent, I want to see things like it's fairly successful, it's very successful or it's slightly unsuccessful because using language like that shows that you're evaluating OK, and giving it a value of how successful something has been. And knowing that it says global example, you must talk about the Antarctic Treaty. Finally, I'm also going to set a revision quiz. On global hazards. Now, this is more for me to assess what you remember and what you know. So, where I can see gaps in knowledge, I can now set another video next week and set some more activities which hopefully focus your revision on the areas that you're weakest on. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some ideas. Feel free if you're confident in sustaining this to start looking through your global hazards work, completing some IMAX flashcards, etc. Use um, GCSE pod as well, okay, to be able to help you. So there's plenty for you to be getting on with. And obviously I am on my emails and I'm very good at replying with detail. OK, I've been in touch with most of the class. So if you haven't emailed yet or spoken to me, please make sure you do so. Because I want to make sure that you're OK and you're confident. And I can also arrange phone calls with parents if needs be. So good luck. Lovely to speak to you all. Hope this message gets is nice and clear for you. If you've got any questions, just drop me a line. See you soon.